Good morning and welcome to another edition of Monday Motivation with Bukola. Thank you, those of you joining live, if you're able to make it. I know it's early in Minnesota. And if you are joining from other parts of the world, thank you so much for joining. And also all my replay viewers on YouTube, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So this morning, I have a great guest for you. Uh, I have Bob Abramson from Michigan. Bob is an award-winning journalist, is a business coach, is a lawyer, and is going to tell us, give us some tips about how you can be motivated in your business and how you can have a successful business this morning. I'm not going to give anything out. I'm just going to wait for you to hear from him directly. What I have a quote for you you know we have to do quotes motivational quotes to help us right so i have a quote and this quote i got from seven design they have about 111 motivational business quotes so the one i decided to pick is the first one and it says leadership is a potent combination of strategy and character but if you must be without one, be without the strategy. And this is a quote from Norman Schwarzkopf. So what do you think? It says, <laughs> it's a potent combination. Leadership is a potent combination of strategy and character. But if you have to give away one, or if you don't have one of those, the strategy is the one that you can do without. Or you have to have your character so in business what does that tell us to do in business for you to be a successful business person i'm sure that bob will shed light on that for us this morning right bob <laughs> absolutely so bob i would like to welcome you i would like to welcome you on monday motivation with bukola thank you so much for accepting my invitation to come and motivate my audience this morning and you woke up super early too because it's like 6 30 a.m in michigan right now <laughs> thank you thank you and welcome to the show yeah happy happy to be here it's okay i usually get up at 5 a.m so this is this is okay for me oh great you're not like me i sleep till 8 a.m that's a secret don't tell nobody, <laughs> even though I'm telling the whole world. <laughs> yes, because I have a son. He doesn't go to school until about 9 o'clock. So I get to sleep in till 8 o'clock before we get up and start, you know, heading out for the morning. But anyhow, back to Bob. So, Bob, first of all, can you um tell me a little bit about yourself? and i found out you were an award-winning journalist and i said to you that we have that in common we are both journalists because i ha also have journalism background and from journalism to law and then to business <laughs> so can you tell us more about that please absolutely good morning to your audience particularly well when i was uh, a freshman in college at the University of Michigan, I went to pledge a fraternity and I went through the entire pledge term and we got to the, the last day, initiation day, and I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm ready to go in the brotherhood. And out of the blue, I got blackballed for my fraternity on the very last day of, of my pledge term. And I was literally supposed to live at the fraternity house the, the next year, my sophomore year. And as you can imagine, that was a devastating life event. And I didn't know how I was going to recover from that. Yeah. I came back my sophomore year and I dove headfirst into writing and was part of the Michigan daily. And mm -hmm. two years later, I was one of six people around the country to work at USA Today, 
as an intern. And on July 1st, 1994, yeah. I appeared on page one of the front page of USA Today's sports section, my byline. And that launched my entire career. I went on to become a professional sports writer mm -hmm. for seven years, uh, was voted you know, the top investigative reporter in the state of Ohio. And then I landed my dream job covering University of Michigan football. And the first season, they won the national championship. I, I think it's because of yeah. me. Um, and because <laughs> yes. <laughs> because of that, we ended up, um, I ended up co-authoring a book on their mm -hmm. national championship season in 1998, which sold 15,000 copies. And, wow. you know, over the, over those seven years, I got to interview, you know, Martina Navratilova, Grant Hill, Tom Brady, you know, athletes, you name it. But then in 2002, newspapers were starting to die out and I didn't want to become a dinosaur. You have to do something with your career. <laughs> and my dad suggested that I go to law school. And I said, okay, dad. And I did. The next day I signed up to take the LSAT course and in June 2000, yeah, June 2002, I took the LSAT, July, got married. Uh, I came back from my honeymoon, had an acceptance letter to law school, and in August of 2002, I totally quit law school. And I, saw, and I went full-time three years, and today, mm -hmm. I've been a practicing lawyer for over a decade. And I'm a shareholder now at a law firm called Kafka, Pinkus, and Dolan in Farmington Hills, Michigan. And the reason that I was able to become shareholder was my ability to bring in business. And mm -hmm. I brought in over a million dollars worth of business to my law firm, uh, brought in multiple companies uh, from the ground up. And over time, I've gained an understanding of what it takes to, you know, find the client, to land the client, mm -hmm. and then ultimately, most importantly, to retain the client once you do get them. And what I realized was is that there are many people who go to college and professional schools and they get the skills to do their job. But what they don't understand is or know how is to get business. Mm. And they're just, they get to a point in their career where they're expected to just start bringing in business, but no one teaches you this. Well, that's why, you know, I decided to become a business coach and to share my knowledge because I want to get people to help people get where they want to go because I've been there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I'm here today. That's why I launched my company. And, you know, there's so many different steps that people have to take before they get business that, that they don't understand. Yeah, so there are some steps people have to take to get business. So can you tell us some of those steps they have to take to get business? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, before you even try to land a client, you have to master your own craft. You have to be very good at, at what you are doing, whether you're in real estate, whether you're a financial advisor, you know, go out there, speak, write, learn from the, the mentors in front of you. And, and once you do that, you become an authority in your field. And then you can go out and, and try to get business. But, you know, if you're just a year or two in, it's kind of hard to get business because you really haven't done anything yet in your career. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you said uh, master your craft and you have to go learn to speak, write, and learn from mentors to become the authority. So do you have um, suggestions on how to do that or what would be a timeline for somebody who is aspiring to be in business and they're so scared to take? 
they don't have any motivation. So what would be your advice to those kind of people? Well, number one, whatever your field is, basically you have to call up publications that are in your field. People are always looking for writers. And it's usually a mm -hmm. 90 days out or something to that effect and volunteer to write an article. The same thing goes for speaking. What events, what conferences are in your industry that you want to attend? Well, that is a little further out. You know, you have to look about a year, nine months in advance. You have to find out, okay, who's the person that's running the conference? Who's in charge of hiring the speakers? And volunteer, pitch your idea. You've got to find out well in advance, particularly when it, when it comes to speaking. But when you do all these things by writing, by speaking, people are going to view you as an authority, as an, as an expert on the topic. I can't tell you how many times after I write an article or after I speak on stage that people email me or people come up to me because I put myself out there to the world. Looks like it's frozen for a little bit. Nicole, are you there? Looks like Coca-Cola screen is frozen a little bit. I don't know if her function went out. I think she's trying to get back on. Be patient. She's coming right back. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> there you are. My phone. I had to use my phone. My computer went off. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, can... great. So we just continue with the phone. Thank God for phone. Oh my goodness. My computer just went off for me. So viewers, I'm so sorry. The computer just... Let's see what's happening. Okay. The computer just went off for me. That's crazy. Okay. How is that? We're fine. We're fine. Okay, good. I'm glad I could quickly join my phone. <laughs> Technical issues. So this is motivation for you, aspiring business owners and business owners that are struggling. There will be times that you will have difficulties that you do not expect, like what just happened right now. Don't give up. Find other means, find, you know, whatever can work for the moment and keep pushing through. 
So sorry for the interruption. Let's get back to Bob. <laughs> okay, Bob. So um, my next question now will be, what time is it? Because we're running out of time here. We have 15 minutes more to go. So uh, you, you have a business now. Correct. Can you tell us a little bit about your business, please? Sure. Um, the name of my company is Light a Fire in Your Business. And I love that name. You know, whenever I read it, I'm like, fire. I say fire, you know. <laughs> That's good Flames. <laughs> Flames. <laughs> so why you um, from that name? Why? How did you come up with Light a Fire? Because a lot of people need it, you know, a lot of people need that injection, that, that flame to get, to get going in their business. And so mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. teach business professionals and entrepreneurs how to find land and retain clients. And there's three basic facets to my business. Number one is business coaching. Obviously, um, I offer coaching programs. Mm -hmm. um, to those who are interested. Uh, number two, I offer speaking training uh, to people who want to be speakers, who want to be able to dazzle their audiences and blow them away, but really have no idea how. And mm -hmm. then the third part, what I offer is obviously, which also is part of the coaching, is writing help, um, being a, a former journalist. And but the thing I always teach with my company is that there's three critical steps to developing business. Mm -hmm. um, number one is to marinate. And when I say marinate, you, you're probably thinking about food, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. But it's kind of like food in, in that, you know, a good steak, for example, we, we let the sauces marinate for a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes for business. When you meet someone, you got to develop and foster and build that personal relationship. Okay, let's talk about your upcoming book. You have a book coming up in the fall. So my question, first of all, is what informed the idea of this book that is coming up in the fall? Thank you for mentioning it. Um, I've spent the last year uh, basically writing this book and oh. because I basically want to help business professionals and entrepreneurs take their careers to the next level. And, you know, like I was talking about earlier, I, I mentioned the three critical steps, but this book is those three critical steps on steroids. I mean, we have specific <laughs> chapters just for speaking alone. And then hmm. actually the meeting itself, what do you do to prepare for the meeting? What do you do at the meeting? And then I have a whole different chapter on just following up after a conference. I have chapters on basically how to work a conference for people that, that have never worked at a conference before. Mm -hmm. And what you'll come away with in this book is how to not only land the clients, but build the long-term relationship so that not only can you earn their repeat business, but tons of referrals from them through just word of mouth without even advertising. Wow. And bringing in business is such a career boost once you do it. You become coveted, you become indispensable to wherever you work, it takes you, takes your status, you know, so much higher. Mm -hmm. It takes you to the place where you actually want to go. And the book is going to be probably out later this fall. It's going to be available on Amazon, uh, both via ebook and soft cover. If you want to get on early to my email list, uh, you provided the link. Um, yes. Uh, if you just click on the uh, free three-part video business series, which I'm giving to you, 
Um, you can have your name in the email list and I will give you notices once the book is closer to coming out. And we'll go from there. Wow, great. And you said um, part of it is going to cover speaking. You know, especially speaking, there are so many people who, who are interested in speaking, but they don't know how to go about it. They don't know how to even get a client that is paid because there are some people where they will invite you to come and speak or you will have opportunities to speak but it's mostly free so would you say that this book will help them to navigate that kind of scenarios of just wanting to have them speak for free rather than paying them for their time yes i, I mean i take you through each of the different phases and a lot of people start out speaking for free because you have to just, the most important thing is just to get your body up on that stage. Number one, mm. you got to get used to that feeling of being up in front of people. For some people, it's never comfortable. I mean, I think Henry Fonda, even in age 75, was throwing up every time before he went <laughs> on the stage. Right? But I walk you through. And the most important thing in any speech is the first seven seconds. The audience is going to decide right then and there whether they're coming along with you for the ride or they're going to be checking their cell phone. You don't want them to be on their cell phone. You don't want them to be on your computer. And I, when you work with me, I teach my clients how to grab that audience from the first words out of your mouth by telling a gripping personal story. And, mm. and then from there, you go to teach your, you know, your audience, your clients, whoever, what you're there to teach for, and, and then you close. And if you're really good up on stage, people are gonna wanna follow you after. Yes, <laughs> and I watched, I actually watched, um your speakers reel on your website and it was so funny so uh, would that be a strategy that speakers should should add to their speaking skills or prospective speakers should add in their speaking skills to kind of add a little bit of humor to their speaking yeah i mean you know my reel is um obviously Part of my personal story is in that it's only probably 90 seconds um, mm -hmm. but it was it. powerful good to hear but it's basically <laughs> about anyone that's coming to your site or anyone who runs a conference they're going to mm -hmm. want to see some some of your work what you look like up on stage uh, what your character is like how your body moves how you interact with an audience that's why I highly suggest putting one together and then add a little music, add some quotes in it and just, you know, people's attention spans are short. You have to grab their attention right away. That's why you know, the videos shouldn't be anywhere any longer than probably two minutes. Mm, wow. Thanks. So your book, your upcoming book is titled Wow Your Clients. Is that the title you are sticking to, or this is um, a working title? Wow, your clients, how to land clients and building long term relationships. Yeah, that is. Um, is this going to be the, the actual title? I'm about 99% sure. Um, you know, we did a poll. Okay. We, did, we did about, we did some polls with, with our, mm -hmm. you know, our audience and even on, you know, Facebook mm -hmm. and, this seems to resonate with people. It, it seems to be okay. a clear cut winner. You know, things always change before it goes to publication. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah. it's really what my philosophy is and what I want people to do. And I think that's why okay. I'm about trying to wow the client. Okay. Oh, great. So your your message this morning is how to wow your clients and if you haven't gotten a client yet 
build the relationship and let your character speak for you will that be um your message for the people this morning absolutely because if you don't first build and foster the personal relationship you're never going to get to steps two or three so be patient business doesn't happen overnight i mean i tell a story of one client who it took me three years to land and you know it may take you a wow. month to get a client it may take you a year it may take you three years you just have to keep at hmm. it and be relentless never give up and even if they tell you no that doesn't mean no forever it just means not right now and your attitude has to be i'm going to get hmm. their business eventually hmm. so um i'm hearing persistence is that correct yeah because um you're going to get rejected a lot in business and you have to develop kind of a thick skin and for me what's the worst thing they can say when you ask for their business no and no <laughs> you've been through a lot worse things in your life right and i mean i i I was blackballed black by, yes. by my fraternity. I mean, there's no lower point than that. So when someone says no to me in business, okay, well, not today, but you know, I'm going to follow up with them in three months. Mm -hmm. I'm going to maybe send them an article to let them know I'm still in the neighborhood. I maybe invite them to an event that I'm speaking at. Um, just call them up, say hello every once in a while. If you notice, the people that tend to stay around and don't go away and are persistent, they're gonna eventually get the business because circumstances change. Like look at companies all the time. They have a certain management in place and then suddenly new management comes in and maybe they don't like the set of people that they're working with on the outside. And maybe that's an opportunity for you mm. to get in. And I can't tell you how many times that that's happened to me and to the people in your audience because circumstances mm. change. And that's why, you know, no today doesn't mean no three, three months from now or a year from now. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much. So what would be your last word of motivation for my audience this morning? Last words of motivation. Well, your last word. <laughs> yes. I, I it's Monday that. motivation. Remember? <laughs> oh, is that the name of it? I, I would say this. <laughs> be relaxed. Really. It is about not giving up mm. you're going to get kicked down you're you know you're going to get rejected uh you're going to wonder am i ever going to get a client sometimes and you just have to persevere just like we're persevering today through two outages um life's going to throw curveballs at you but if you just keep on it and stick to your mission and and, and master your craft people are going to want to do business with you. They like people that don't give up. You know, there's a story of Tom Izzo, who is the Michigan State basketball coach, very well known, um, been to many Final Fours. And when he was a, a, a coach at um, Northern Michigan, he was trying to get a, a job as an assistant coach with Judd Heathcote at Michigan State. And the first two years, he came down and was begging for him, you know, begging for a job, and he got turning him away and then he called him again and you know he's calling him for the third third year in a row and finally Judd gave him a, a job a job as an assistant you know why he said because if the guy's that persistent about getting the job that's who I want on my staff mm -hmm. and I would say don't give up just like the, you know Jimmy the late great Jimmy Valvano said don't give up don't ever give up
Wow. Thank you so much, Bob. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Despite the technical glitches we had, you still stayed on. Thank you so much. And you've given us a lot of value. So we'll be looking forward to your book in the fall. And once the book is out, I will also share the link. But in the meantime, I will invite you all to follow Bob if you are watching this video right now or as a replay to so go and check out those freebies he has for you through the link I'm, i've published with the video so you can get on and start learning and be motivated about your own business or if you want to start one to learn what to do and how to go about it thank you so much bob god bless you and have a good day and a good week Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Bye.